Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Those of you whom I have pastored for a while knows that this is probably my favorite verse in the Bible. There's a lot of gospel in it, a lot of encouragement to God's children. And we're going to take a look at this verse today and next Sunday also, if the Lord wills. And then we might kind of take a overall look at to some of the gospel heights Paul has brought us to in Romans 8 as compared to Romans 1 when things get really bad. And so Romans chapter 8, verse 32, we're going to look at this gospel verse. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Let's read it one more time. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this hour right here. O oh Lord, we need you and look to you. I pray you'd have your will and way among us and be pleased to speak to us as we endeavor to preach the gift of your Son and the gift of all things that come with Him, that you would encourage your children, strengthen them in the faith, and call sinners to repentance. We love you, Lord, knowing you first loved us. And we look to you today in Christ's precious name. Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Lots of gospel, lots of hope given to us in this verse. And what I want to do first is really just look at the content of the verse, uh, just what is gathered up in this one verse for us. God spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. I want to begin by saying that the all spoken of there must be God's elect people. And the reason I say that is because of the context that He delivered Him up for us all. Look at the context. Let's go back and read from verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints. And I'm emphasizing for the saints. That's, that's the we and the us that you hear in these verses. He maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, for whom God did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. And let me just gather your thoughts there together around this. Whom He did foreknow, not what He foreknew. It's not God looking out into the future and seeing who would choose Him. And therefore He chose them. That would be post-destination. There is no such thing. It doesn't say what God foreknew. It says for whom God foreknew. It's people whom God foreknew. And the word foreknowledge is not just that God knows everything that's going to come to pass. He does. God knows the end from the beginning. But this is a people whom God has set His love upon for whom God did foreknow. He also, every one of them that He foreknew He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate them, every one of them, He also called. 
and whom he called them. Everyone that he called, he also what? Justified. And whom he justified them, every one of them. He also what? Now I know I'm adding in scripture there to getting you to think this thing through. Okay, this golden thread of redemption here. Okay, for whom God did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that his son might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, every one of them, and whom he called, he justified. Now that tells you this much, that this must be a special inner calling, right? Because everyone God called, he justified. Are all men justified? Made right with God? No. Are all men who hear the gospel justified? Who have the gospel preached in their hearing, I should say. Do all men believe when they hear? No, they do not. So it, you know what I'm doing now and what we ought to be doing every day? Giving this outward call of the gospel. I'm calling you today by preaching to you to turn to Jesus Christ for life, to look to Him and live. We are sent forth as witnesses to give an outward call to all men, preach the gospel to all men. But there has to be some inner call, doesn't there? There has to be the work of the Spirit in a heart to turn it to Christ, okay? And everyone who receives that call from God, God justifies, and whom He justified, them He also glorified. Verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And then we come to our text, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? So I say again, when it speaks of God sparing not His own Son, but delivering Him up for us all in context, the all must be God's people. And it says, God spared not, he that spared not his own son. I think that is very similar to what John the Apostle said in the third chapter of his gospel account, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Gave him up to suffering for our sins. Gave him up. God spared not. And I want to speak to you a moment about that. In His atoning work for sinners, Christ was not spared any of the severity of God's justice against sin. Let me say it another way. The entirety of the severity due your sin from God's justice was put upon His Son. His Son was not spared the justice that was due our sin. The severity of it, that's what Christ tasted on that cross. As our sin bearer on the cross, the full wrath of God was poured out upon His own Son. He spared Him not. You getting this? God did not spare him that. His full wrath was poured out upon him. The wrath due our sin. There was no mitigation of the punishment due us. Let's turn back to Isaiah's prophecy, chapter 53. Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him. Just think of this. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. It would be bad enough if He just laid your iniquity on the Son. Think of the severity that He would have to face just for your sin. Verse 7, 
He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he that spared not his own son. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him on our behalf. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, the just dying for the unjust, This righteous one who knew no sin being made sin for us that we sinners might be made the righteousness of God in him. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. When Jesus died to reconcile us to God, he did not fail in his effort to do so. All of his sheep he brings into the fold. Pure, clean, white, forgiven, righteous, reconciled, at peace with God he brings us in. Jesus does this. He was not spared. Back in our verse, spared not means just what it says. He that spared not his own son. This ought to make us who profess Christ as our Lord and Savior to hate sin and to be so unwilling to sin. And at the same time, it ought to increase our love of the Lord Jesus Christ who was willing to love somebody like us and give Himself for us. He was not spared. Hallelujah. How we ought to love Him and how we should never want to sin. Do you know what a healthy Christian looks like? Somebody with a thankful heart to Jesus Christ for who He is and what He's done. And somebody who has bruised knees. What do you mean, Brother Pete? A healthy Christian has bruised knees. I mean you're on your knees every day repenting for being a sinner and failing God like you do. In other words, the sign of a healthy Christian is an ongoing repentance throughout life. You don't repent just once. You sorrow for your sin when you fail God. You keep repenting and moving on. Then let's notice that phrase, delivered him up. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up. He delivered him up to suffer all that was necessary for the Father's will to be satisfied and for our salvation to be fully accomplished. Just think of the abandonment of God that our sins deserved. Remember, He, he feels that abandonment. We, I, how can we explain what He felt when the Father turned away? My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? That's what you and I should be crying. Left in our sin... Forsaken of God. How could God look upon sinners like we are? How could He love us? But yet loving us, He did not spare His Son what it costs to bring sinners like we are into reconciliation with Him. He displayed that great love through Jesus Christ. Delivered Him up for us. At the same time that Jesus was bearing our sins in His own body on the tree, He was also, as the sinless Son, offering up to God that pure and precious and acceptable sacrifice of a life of pure delight in God that God rightly had required of us. Now think of that. God has required of us this. 
to love Him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength all the time. How many of you have lived up to that? I mean, just since you've met Him in Christ, but what about before that? God requires of us a life of pure delight in Him. Now, Christ is the one who fulfilled that. Christ is the one, when His disciples came to Him, He said, my meat is to do the will of Him that sent me. That was what Christ loved was to do the will of the Father. That's not what we loved, is it? And so here is Christ coming, having loved the Father with all of His heart every day, delighting to do the Father's will. And He's coming to that sacrifice and He's taking your sin in His own body on that tree. But while He's taking your sin, here's what God also sees. His Son in whom He has been well pleased, willing to take the penalty for your sin. And so while He's bearing your sin in His own body on the tree, He is at the same time pleasing the Father, having offered that one sacrifice forever to make atonement for the sins of mankind. That life that pleased God, He presented to His Father. Jesus did indeed pay it all, didn't He? His life He laid down as a ransom for many. If you ever wonder why the sin was lifted from our shoulders and placed upon Jesus Christ? The Bible's answer is this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's the love of God. Now, back in the content of our verse, He that spared not His own Son but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him... I want you to think about those two little words, with Him, with Christ, with Christ. And I just want to remind you that with Him, there is mercy. Plenteous mercies day by day. With Him is a salvation that is full of and free. With Him, there is grace super abounding. With Him. With Him. How shall He not with Him? In Christ, all of these things are there. The entire phrase, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Let's consider that. How shall God not with Christ, also freely give us all things. And I want to point out something. Paul did not ask, shall God not with him freely give? He puts the little word how. How shall God not freely give you all things? Okay? So here's what you need to see in that. God's love for us has already led Him to give us His best when He gave us His Son. And that same love for us moves Him to give us all things that are consistent with that salvation that He has given us in His Son. I'm not going to bore you all with the little illustration you've heard through the years of how when I married my wife, we're from South Louisiana now, you know, P. Rose and Bows and all of that. Mr. Duval gave me his daughter to marry, but wouldn't give me her shoes. Y'all remember that? So everywhere I took her, she had to go barefooted the first few years. No, that'd be silly, wouldn't it? If he's going to give me the best he has, his daughter, he would give the other things. Listen, God gave his son. You know what else he's going to give you? Everything consistent with the salvation he's given you in his son. He's going to give you everything you need in your spiritual life. He's going to give you everything freely. 
He gave His Son freely. Now this is a great encouragement to us saints. And I want to work with this just a minute and maybe help you see just what an encouragement and comfort that is. How shall not God do anything else than that? It would be inconsistent of God who has no inconsistency. It would be inconsistent if He didn't with Christ give you everything else that goes with Him and that you need. What a great comfort it is in knowing that. The same God who loved you in His Son has that love set upon you now and will assuredly give you all things. So, listen to the joyful sound in those words, freely give. Freely give. That means that's pretty much available to every one of you, right? Brother Pete, I don't feel I deserve. Did it say anything about you deserving it? No, when you did not deserve Christ, He gave Him. He's going to give you all things. God has given His Son and there is nothing beneficial to us that God will withhold. Everything you need to glorify God and to live out God's will for your life will be supplied to you because God has already given you His Son. So, along with our salvation... Everything necessary for our sanctification will be given us freely. Hmm. Well, that eliminates so many excuses we make, doesn't it? It makes us... You know what? Hey, I want you to have hope. You say, but I fail so miserably, but there's hope to do better because God has things freely to give you. Okay? What about your preservation? Your perseverance in the faith. Is God not able to help His saints persevere? And will He not preserve them? Did we not read that everyone whom He justifies, He also glorifies? Do you know there's always a great hope set out in front of you no matter what you face in life? It's not going to be the end of you. There's a hope for you even beyond death when you're going to be more alive than ever. There is a hope set before you that is real and enduring. It's incorruptible, fadeth not away, reserved. Yes. When you look at it in those terms, the, the cross is the guarantee of the continual, unfailing generosity of God. How shall He not with Christ also freely give you all things? It cannot be otherwise. God having given you His Son is going to give you all things consistent with that salvation. Well, a few closing thoughts on some of the comforts in this, and we'll pick up here, Lord willing, next week and look a little deeper in this verse. Do you ever get distracted? Do, do, you, do you ever get led away from being all you can be for Jesus Christ? Go ahead, y'all nod your heads this way. <laughs> okay? It's okay. Do you ever get discouraged? Distracted from keeping the main thing as the main thing? Sometimes, when we're not living all out for the Lord, when we have become distracted, discouraged. You know what we're, we are failing to do? We are failing to enter in every day in the true, full worship of the living God. Those things are robbing you from that pure enjoyment of the presence of Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you that this verse assures you that God is able to give you what you need to maintain true worship of Him. And I'm not saying you're never going to fail again. We, we are in these bodies of flesh. But I'm saying you don't lose hope while in this body of flesh. You've been distracted. 
Get your eyes back to the Lord. You've been disinterested. Set your hope back in Him. Seek Him. You've not been giving yourself fully to the Lord. Get back to Him. God will give you all things you need to do that and to carry on and honor Him on this earth. Comfort and encouragement comes from this verse also because it lets us know that we can call out to God for these all things. There is the ministry of the Holy Spirit we reference back in verse 26 when He prays for us when we don't even know how to pray ourselves as we ought. But we can call out for these all things to be given to us when we need them. In other words, when the world and the flesh, the devil press in, we can be enabled to see our everything in Christ and to lean on Him. And the all things include all that we need to win the battle and to keep seeking the Lord and His kingdom first. Just think about the rest of the chapter. Look at verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is He that condemneth? It's Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation separate us from the love of Christ? Shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, peril or sword? Can any of that separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 36, as it is written, For thy sake we were killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Everything that you need to glorify God and enjoy Him forever is given you freely with Jesus Christ. He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. How shall He not, with Christ, freely give us these things? All these things. Okay? So, listen, here's the closing. Whatever challenges come our way in body or soul, the all things are freely given to us. God will be there with us giving us what we need. Now I want to point out something. Look at verse 28 again. We read this. Here's the first all things, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to God's purpose. So there's the first all things. Okay? But what about when these all things that work together for good become these things? Drop down to verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? See, it's one thing for us when enjoying a measure of health and security on this earth and things like that, say that we believe that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. But when those all things become these things like cancer, heart failure, a tragic accident, when these things, all things, become these things for us, when it's your cancer, your heart condition, your tragedy, whatever making, when those all things that work together for good are these things for you, I'm here to tell you on the authority of God's Word, the next all things in verse 32 is yours. God will with Christ freely give you all things that you need no matter what your situation in life. 
Mm -hmm. And if you're walking along and you're desiring a better walk with the Lord, on the authority of God's Word, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He will give you all things that you need because He has already given you His Son. Let's look at our verse one more time and read it. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Let's stand together.